So today I'm going to be talking about a very common interview question in graphics and games related engineering positions, which is finding the closest point on a line segment to another point. This video assumes a very basic understanding of vectors and a modern programming language like C++. If you bomb that phone screening or programming test, you are in the right place. And if you are doing any 3D application work, this sort of problem is likely to present itself many times over. So let's start with the inputs, which is three points into the function. The two points defining the line segment and a free point for which we are trying to find the closest point on the segment two. We will call the segment points P0 and P1 and the free point Q. We can't directly find the closest point on the segment to the point, but we can find first find vectors for the segment and one of the segment points of the free point. We can then find the projection of this vector onto the segment vector and add this projection onto our first segment point again to find the closest point on the line segment. If you understand vector projection, you can derive the solution to this problem without memorizing anything. So how do we do this? Well, first we can create these two vectors for our projection by subtracting P1 minus P0 and Q minus P0. We will call these variables D and PQ respectively. Then we can look at our vector projection equation, which states that you can project a vector u onto v with u dot v divided by v dot v multiplied by the vector v. Remember the dot product takes two vectors as inputs and returns a scalar floating point number as a result. A float multiplied by a vector scales the x, y, and z components by that amount equally, and thus must be collinear to v or the zero vector if the scalar projection is zero. So if we plug our variables into vector projection, we are using pq dot d divided by d dot d multiplied by the vector d, like so. So why isn't vector projection alone enough? Well, there are two reasons for this. The first is that this vector is appropriately pictured as magnitude and direction from the origin itself. We have a vector at this stage, but what we are looking for is a point in world space on the line segment. To deal with this, we will need to add the first point on the line segment to this projector, projected vector to get the appropriate position in world space. To help visualize this, try plugging in the following numbers for P0, 10, 10, 0, P1, 20, 20, 0, and let's make Q 19, 15, and 0. The closest point on the segment is 17 for x, 17 for y, and 0 for z. But the vector projection itself is a vector of 7, 7, and 0. We have to add this vector projection, which is 7, 7, 0, to the first point on the segment, which is 10, 10, 0, to get the appropriate closest point on the line segment in world space, which in this case is 17, 17, 0. The other aspect that is still missing is a clamp to our scalar projection. The scalar projection might give a float outside of the range of 0 to 1. Picture two planes with a normal of P0 to P1. For all points behind the plane with said normal, and P0 being a point on the plane, the closest point on the segment will be P0. For all points in front of the plane with the same normal and P1 being a point on the plane, the closest point on the segment will be P1. So in order to deal with this, we need to clamp our scalar projection between 0 and 1. Recall our vector projection equation again. The left side in the parentheses is our scalar projection. So how does this translate to C++ code? As you might expect, our function takes three vector arguments, defining the three points and returns the closest point on the segment. While it is true that vectors and points are different, it is common to use a class like vector3 for both of them because anything you want to do for points can be handled with a vector class. So first we do our subtraction to find d and pq. Then we find the scalar projection of pq onto d. We saturate that scalar projection, which means to clamp it between 0 and 1 inclusive. Finally, we add to P0 to find the closest point on the segment. And that's it.
Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you are interested in me making more of this type of content.